We're going to finish up our study of abstract algebra in chapter 11, and we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups. Keep in mind that your textbook does go on to talk about rings and fields. Since this is an introductory abstract algebra course, we will stop right here with groups. Before we talk about the fundamental theorem of abelian, finite abelian groups, here are some things that we already know, we've already learned that sort of have led us up to this point. So every group of prime order is isomorphic to Z sub P. Notice again, those are both cyclic groups. Every order of P squared, again, where P is prime, is isomorphic to Z P squared or Z P cross Z P, the external direct product. We also have Cauchy's theorem that says if G is a finite group and P is a prime factor of order G, then G has an element of order P and hence a cyclic subgroup of order P. And we also talked in detail about the group U of N isomorphic to the direct product of cyclic groups. So we've got a lot going on with cyclic groups and the direct product. And that is brings us now to the fundamental theorem. The fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, or just the fundamental theorem, tells us that every finite abelian group is isomorphic to a direct product of cyclic groups of prime power order. And that those terms in the product and the orders are determined by the group. So basically what this does is gives us a way or an algorithm for constructing all the abelian groups of any order. So for instance, if you have order P, where P is obviously a prime, we already know that that group is going to be isomorphic to Z of P, which I'm sorry, D, Z sub P, which we just talked about on the last slide. But if you have a group of order P squared, which again, we've talked about before this, P squared, we can think of two as either two or as one plus one. So we're thinking about how many ways can we partition two? Because we can partition it in two ways, we have two possible groups that a group of order P squared would be isomorphic to. It would either be isomorphic to Z sub P squared or Z P cross Z P. So for instance, if I had a group of order three, then that group has to be isomorphic to Z3. But if I had a group of order nine, which is obviously three squared, that's isomorphic to either Z9 or Z3, external direct product, Z3. So what about P cubed? What could that be isomorphic to? Again, we would start by looking at how many ways can we partition three? So three can be three, it can be one plus two, which incidentally is going to be the same as two plus one because these would be isomorphic to one another and that's what we're dealing with as isomorphisms. Or we could have one plus one plus one. So those are, the, those are what it could be isomorphic to. Either Z P cubed, Z P, direct product ZP squared or ZP cross ZP cross ZP. So let's do a little bit of practice. How many abelian groups of order 125 are there and what are they? So really what you're doing is you're thinking about how do I factor 125? 125 is really five cubed. So we just talked about P cubed. Well, that's what we're doing here. This is just five cubed. So what are the groups or how many are there? Well, how many ways could I partition three? I could partition it into three or one plus two or one plus one plus one. So there are three groups. How many abelian groups? There are three groups. What are they? They are Z of five cubed, which is 125. Remember this is P cubed and this is P cross P squared. So this would be Z five cross Z 25. And the last one would be Z five 
oops, Z5 cross Z5. Let's do the same for 144, which is not quite as easy as the last one. So for 144, I'm going to write 144 as prime factors. And again, if you're not sure how to do that, you just break it down into the factor tree. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go right to the fact that that's two to the four times three squared. Now, what do I do from here? Well, I think about the exponent. So the exponent of four can be writ written as four. It can be written as three plus one, as two plus two, as two plus one plus one, or as one plus one plus one plus one. And the exponent of two can be, re can be written as two or one plus one. So to answer the first part of the question, how many abelian groups of 144 are there? The answer is five times two or 10. Now, what are they? This is where things get interesting. So I know based on um, what I have here that this base is two. So I can write this as Z and then two to the fourth. So I'm just gonna keep them in exponents. I'm not gonna write it as Z16. I'm just gonna keep it as two to the fourth, just so we understand that's where the four comes from. And then that can be cross Z2. I'm sorry, Z3 squared. So again, three squared. Or I could have Z two to the fourth, which is of course Z sub 16. Um, and then Z three to the first, Z three to the first. So now I've used both of those with four. And then I come back and use three and one. So I would have Z two to the third cross Z two. And then I would have that both with Z three squared and with Z three, Z three. And really, we would just continue to build that list. So I'm not going to write them all out just for the sake of time because there's 10 of them. We've already written four of them, but I would repeat that process for this two plus two, for two plus one plus one, and one plus one plus one plus one, again, for each um, two and one plus one for the base of three. The last application of the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups is to be able to determine what a group is isomorphic to based on its structure. So for instance, here is a group of order eight. So we know that eight can be rewritten as two to the third. So I'm looking at three. Three can be written as three or two plus one or one plus one plus one. So what does that tell me? That tells me my choices are that this is isomorphic to z to the two to the third or eighth as z two squared which is four cross z two to the first or z two cross z two cross z two so how do i know well let's take a look at the orders of some of these elements remember that if if groups are isomorphic, they're going to have the same number of elements of the same order. So if I look at this Cayley table, hopefully it's very clear that O has order two, B has order two, because it's back to the identity, because obviously O is the identity here, we can tell. Um, again, we can tell because none of these elements changed when they've been applied to O. So I've got one, two elements so far of order two. Obviously D must be order two because we're back to the identity and P and Q and C and N and U. Everything has order two. So it can't be Z8 because Z8 has an element of order eight and it can't be Z4 cross Z2 because there's at least one element of order four and therefore 
it has to be isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2. This last one is for you to try on your own. So press pause and then try this question in its entirety. Take as long as you need. Uh, you might find it helpful to utilize an online uh, modular calculator so that you don't have to convert everything to mod 65 on your own. Uh, when you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, the first question just asks us to list the possible direct product groups. So how many elements are there? There are 16 elements. Oops, the order of G is 16. And 16 can be written as 2 to the 4th. So how do I partition 4? Well, it could be Z16. It could be Z2 to the 3rd, which is 8, cross Z2. It could be Z4 cross Z4, because that would be a partition of 2 and 2. It could be a partition of 2 and 1 and 1. Or it could be a partition of 1 and 1 and 1 and 1. And again, remember when I'm saying 1, I'm talking about the exponent on 2. So there are five possible groups, and I have listed them there. Now, list the order of each element. This is the part that could really take you a long time unless you utilize uh, an online calculator of some sort. So we know the order of 1 is equal to 1 because it's going to just take one time to get back to the identity of 1. For instance, to find 8, you would take 8, which is 8. You would take 8 squared, which is 64. So obviously it's not order 2, and we know it has to be order of 2 or 4 or 8. Um, and continue that process, and you find that once you get to 8 to the 4th, you end up equivalent to 1 mod 65. So that's really what you're doing, is taking that to what power, which means the order of 8 is 4 because it takes me 4 times to get back to the identity. So what I find is that all of the elements have order 4 except for 14 and 51 and 64 all have order 2 and everything else has order 4. So what does that tell me? That tells me not isomorphic to Z16, not isomorphic to Z8 cross Z2 cross Z2. Um, it could be Z4 cross Z4, or it could be Z4 cross Z2 cross Z2. It couldn't be this one. These are all order two. So I've got two options here. How do I determine between the two? Well, we know that Z4 cross Z2 cross Z2 um, has a subgroup that's isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2. And therefore, at, that has more than three elements of order two. And I only have three elements of order two. So it can't be this one. So it must be Z4 cross Z4. That is all for this playlist of abstract algebra. Coming up next, take another course at Bellevue University or check out another playlist.